a 351 Windsor and a 68 Fairlane. What could possibly go wrong? Well, let's see. Exhaust, pulleys, brackets. Should I go on in this episode? We try to get our pulleys all lined up, have to do some custom fab, not use the stuff that we bought, but we get it done. Okay, so what we have here in my hand is the parts that I did to show you in the parts video. And what this is actually for is actually for mounting your radiator. You can't just go and get these parts off a of Mustang because they are different. You've got the feet for them, and then you've got the top piece. The top piece actually doesn't come with the rubber pieces actually installed like this. What I ended up doing is I took this radiator and put it in here in place and I actually test fitted these because I wanted to make sure because as you can see that's a bit of a difference. It's going to take and fit right there. So what I ended up doing is checking and sure enough on the bottom of this radiator it went through and they actually did the pinch marks so that these will actually fit like they're supposed to. This one, as you'll see from here, it'll actually fit the top of the radiator, but I'm gonna have to hammer and dolly on the radiator core support to get what we want to do. So we'll see from here what actually ends up having to happen. I know when I place these on here, it raises it up a little bit more than I like, but once we raise this back up with the hammer and dolly, it should fit. It should work. Okay, what we started off with were well, what are the stock pulleys? If I can get it to go back on. For this particular engine. Let me see if I can. I had this on there the other day. Okay, now I've got to stop. Now, I don't know how good these cameras can do, but as you can see, we actually have what was original bracket here, here. I made one to fit here, and that alternator does not line up whatsoever. This one lines up here but this pushes it out way too far so my next move is I'm gonna try out that bracket but I was also thinking about just go ahead and put on that other belt drive system because it would eliminate having to mess with all this stuff here but we'll see once we get into it It may end up being in the long run better to just try that other bracket out on this. See if maybe that doesn't fix the problem. We'll see. Okay. I'm going to show you what I ended up doing. I bought this piece of 8 inch thick steel. Now before you say that that's too thin... This is actually thinner than that eighth inch steel that's right there. And this is a factory one. Now I know it's got some reinforcement on it, but this will give you an idea. What I ended up doing is I cut two pieces off. These already have the holes drilled in it, but I trimmed it up on the bandsaw, drilled my hole. This is a little bit bigger right here than the 5 16 that it needs to be. That way we've got a little bit of jiggle room. This, unfortunately, is as big as I could get on my half inch. So I kind of walled it out a little bit. This is an extra piece. What we're going to do is once we've actually got this piece situated, we'll hit the lower hole, move this up to make sure it's not going to make any impact on what's going on with the fan on the front of the alternator. Then I'll mark it, we'll bring it back over here, cut it on the bandsaw, 
and then I'll go back through and I'll weld it to where it needs to be welded and that'll give us a triangulated piece all right you can see where we're at now this is triangulated here this piece has already been marked over here I don't know if you can see it and we'll connect from here to there so that we won't hit this always fun because it will hit every once in a while so that will line up my pulleys so the next step finish up this bracket then turn around put the mounts on this belt on and then put on our fan bolt fan blade down here I still have to make the connections into transmission cooler but overall it's looking pretty good all right here we go fan blades on with spacer belts on alternators hooked up pulleys are aligned and there you go you can see down there there's the lower mount here's the upper mount holding the radiator in same thing here one thing I will need to do is I'm out of clamps for 3 8 fuel line so transmission lines are going to have to be redone give you a little peek in here you can see the roller rockers in there all right next step I've got to go through and you can't really see it down in there right now but I got to deal with the dipstick tube for the transmission once that's done it's time to rebuild tie rod ends and uh, purchase for the springs for this car that'll take care of it still need to bleed the brakes discs in the front disc in the rear but this car is coming along and even though I may not have posted it yet I'm not sure if I lost the footage or not that engine starts and runs I've actually heard that one starting to run so still a bunch of stuff to do exhaust parts extra distributor there that's actually DuraSpark distributor so I can run a electronic ignition aha there's the shifter sitting over there hiding got the installation kit and a new cable for it so we will go from there mm. don't like that look on the top of the dash but eventually everything will come together so Lord willing Maybe the end of this next week, or before I go back to work this time, maybe this thing will actually crank up and move under its own power. It's already got a drive shaft hooked up to it. Be kind of loud though. Straight headers. Let's see what we can do. Well, I want to thank y'all for watching. This episode didn't quite turn out the way it thought it would. But if you liked it, please come along again. Like, subscribe rumble if you're on rumble uh give us a look we're trying to get 500 subs so we can go to no name nationals but also give a look to the people who are also running in the no name 500 for the no name nationals if you hit hashtag no name nationals in your search bar on youtube you'll actually pop up a bunch of other channels that are trying to why don't you go take a look at them support them